Hello and welcome to Chinny Vision. This time we're getting into the time machine and going back to 1983. Now a few weeks ago we looked at some issues of personal computer news at random and that personal computer news was a UK based computer magazine that ran weekly from April 83 and through to early 1985. A time when lots and lots of computers were being released, practically one every single week. So what I thought I'd do is run through some of the computers released and that were reviewed in PCN because they're not always obvious. It's not always obvious machines like the CPC and the Spectrum and the Dragon and machines like that. There's some stuff that basically never made it big. So this time we're going to look at 1983 and in subsequent editions I will look at 84 and 85 as well. So we start off in April 1983, uh, the month that Personal Computer News launched. And we've got a new machine on the cover here, the Tycom. And it looks like it's running CPM, two disk drives, very weird looking keyboard. There, look at that down there. That's a like a, well, you wouldn't be typing on that for long, would you? Anyone who's owned a Spectrum 128 would testify for that. And yes, this looks like a high-end bit of kit. So I'm going to go to page 41. Here we go, the Tycom microframe, despite the sneak out of casing, Richard King detects some rough edges in its operation. And this thing, um, having read through this earlier, it's a CPM based machine, um, 8088 or 86 processor, I'll check that in a minute. But um, it has this interface on it that and now it's supposed to make it easy to connect to other machines. And if we look down here, we've got some uh, cards that go in the back. Um, this is the card frame which expansion modules are fitted and below is the main PCB. We'll just check the spec before we go any further. So it's a 8088 8 megahertz, 2,900 pounds. That's uh, oh, eight, eight, eight and a half thousand pounds in today's money. About that. Full travel keys. Um, well, it didn't look, look like it to me. Uh, system bus with 96 way connectors carrying specialized interface cards and twin 680k floppies and it runs yeah it runs cpm um and yes making a big fuss they're saying there's been lots of publicity about this machine uh, and it's almost like someone to put a cray four in a box and was selling it for the price of a cortina and it has this vbc which is versatile bus connect um and it makes it supposed to make it easier to plug things into the back of it um, it comes in three coordinated colour schemes. This one's the black one. Um, so for your three grand in 1983 money, you can choose the colour of your computer. And they are complaining about the weight of the machine because it appears to be made out of cast iron and sheet steel and is incredibly heavy. Although it apparently has a very nice crackle finish to it too. And you can have, as I say, three coordinated colour schemes. Um, so yes, it's... a uh, your documentation comes in A5 ring bound user manual with 99 pages, which has no index. Um, so, uh, yes, as it say, they say the physical construction of this machine bears a superficial resemblance to most other machines. That is, says has three parts, a main unit, a VDU, and a keyboard. From then on, it's different. The mass of the machine appears to be cast iron with elements of sheet steel, a computer built of cast iron. You thought those original IBM PCs were heavy. I think they were made of steel. Imagine it's like made of cast iron. That's like your wood burner or something. Um, the main unit has enough fins to make one think it fell off a Japanese racing bike. There are two five and a quarter inch floppy drives in the top half and a nameplate on the bottom. Behind the nameplate is about the silliest place anyone could think to put a small recess containing some pretty important controls. The reset button and the boot selector um, that are there as is a very important indicator which you're only worth telling what's wrong with a machine when it won't work oh dear i mean this is a cpm business machine so you're buying this to perhaps put into an industrial environment where you want to have a cpm a machine that can run cpm um got the vdu there the talking about the, the other vdu can't can only turn a limited way on the cable um the quality of the display was bad, to put it mildly. The interlace was grossly unstable, so each alternate line wobbled. At the corner, some letters became quite unreadable. And the edges of the signals were slushy, so the verticals disappeared when inverse mode was turned on. Again, this is a £3,000 machine. 
Uh, there's 12, 96 way Euro card adapters at the back, apparently, to plug things into. Uh, these connectors are not to any recognised format or standard. Uh, even though no documentation was provided, I, can, I, can, I can't think of any published interface documentation based on the 96 way Euro card adapter. Look at those fins on the side there. Let's zoom in. Look at that. Lovely thing to look at, but uh, yeah. Um, this has got to go into an industrial environment, really, hasn't it, this machine? Um, it does a job of being a business computer quite adequately, thanks to CPM, but slowness in response bothers me. If it's notable with one user, what's it going to be like with several? Hmm. So, yeah, that's the Tycom Microframe, yours for £2,900 in April 1983, with a fairly elderly 8088. You might have thought, thought for that money you were getting 8086 by then, but, but no. So we go on to another edition of PCN. Let's move that back there. I'm going to get my finder up, and we are going to go to the 22nd of June 1983, and we've got the Comex, Comex, a can this £120 Hong Kong computer compete oh, that's very interesting um this is issue 15 so i've got max phillips falls for the comics or comics 35 a full featured color micro for a miserly 120 pounds been looking on ebay for these can't find any sign of them at all so what we got you don't launch a 120 pound home computer anymore unless you know exactly what you're doing apparently these people well, they didn't because it flopped. Uh, fortunately, the Hong Kong-based Comics World Operations seems to have the market sussed. It's existing companies who should watch out. Hmm. The Comics 35 is a conservative little computer. It's beautifully built, well-designed, and it offers 32K of RAM, colour graphics, sound, a usable keyboard, and joystick. And joystick? And 10 bundle programs and a good basic for miserly £120. Got to be a catch here. Got to be a catch. Um... So what we're looking at. So let's look at the construction. For £120, it's quite a shock. The comics is world style and well made. The main unit has a moving keyboard and built in four way joystick. There's also a welcome on off switch at the back. Well, of course, they're having go at the spectrum layer, aren't they? Because it doesn't have an on off switch. Prizing the comics open involves so two screws and a small fight with its snap on top. Inside, it's beautifully made and well laid out board, all posh connectors and apparently clunchless. Again, another <laughs> knock at the spectrum. The big surprise is the 1082 processor. Oh, that's ancient, isn't it? That's ancient. Normally, no one could care less what a processor was in the machine, as long as it was a 6502Z80, 6809, or 8080. Yeah, 10802 is a CMOS 8 bit chip equipped with a neat instruction set and powers of 16 bit registers. Um, well, yeah, but it's, it's ancient, isn't it? And. Well, it's a bit proprietary. I don't know. I'm not, I could be wrong there. No matter how good a designer of the 1802 is, um, its rareness is the fault. How many 1802 programmers are there left? How quickly will software houses train the latest 10-year-old folk to heroes to program it? Well, indeed. Um, isn't that what they use? I don't know. Did NASA use these? Someone vague. I know so little about the 1802. Um... So it's got a QWERTY keyboard. Any pictures of this thing? Well, that's the insides. Look, there's not much in there, really. Looks like the uh, ribbon connector's wired onto the board there. But they're fragile. Oh, look at that! That's actually the joystick. That must be the joystick. The comics plug straight into a TV. There'll be an American NTSC version but there's no monitor up, but it may be fine for a home computer, but it can be difficult to develop on. Um, it produces a stable 40 by 24, eight color display with clear characters and bright color. Um, the comics is at cursory glance, a sort of color ZX81. 40 by 24 line display with 128 characters. Lowercase isn't standard. <laughs> right, like the dragon then. The comics color is cryptic to say the least. It goes something like this. The 128 characters, normally white, Repeat with codes 128 to 225 in a second colour, normally cayenne. At simple level, the comics basic puts your typing up in the first colour and its response is out in the second. There's the machine itself. I mean, yeah, that's your manual. But how are you doing? 
Oh dear, look at that keyboard. I mean, uh, uh, uh. then you've got a joystick there. A big, big light for your power to tell you it's on. Yeah. And look, they've put some Chinese food next to it. Even though it's from Hong Kong. Oh dear. So what else have we got going on? A bit about the basic. Uh, the comics plugs into... I can even call it the comics. I Comex. Comex. Who knows? The com, I'm going to call it, again, the comics plugs into an ordinary cassette recorder using its supplied ear and mic cables. Uh, comics at least isn't babbling incoherently about micro drives, but says it hopes to have disk drives later this year. It's Does this writer have a problem with Sinclair? Um... Because he, he keeps on knocking the spectrum, and let's face it, um, if he's backing this thing, he's backing the wrong horse. Um, expansion sport. Well, there's room for it. There's a single expansion socket for you name it. Comics is planning a printer, disk drives, and so on. It's a shame there isn't a plain ordinary Centronics printer socket. It's 120 quid, mate. You're not going to get that. Um, we've got some basics. Detail about the basic there. The verdict. The Comics 35 is a great little machine for £120. Everyone knows the prices go down and performance goes up, so the Comics is right in many ways, but not dramatically so. Competition is to be the unstoppable and so far unrivaled ZX Spectrum. It costs a mere extra £10 to go to the 48k Wonder Machine. Oh, we're saying Wonder Machine now. Make up your mind, mate. The Comics' little advantage is keyboard quality display, solid construction will have to work harder to track from the Spectrum market for cheap quality software. It's wait and see time for the comics. It has to get add-on software and technical information to make it. When the flies start falling, comics will be well placed. It should be able to place chase the price tag with Sinclair itself, a game few others dare to risk. Hmm. You've got to wait for the arrival of the comics. Yeah, you've got a long wait. It's 2017 and we're still waiting. Don't buy mail order until you've seen a few dealers windows full of them. Yeah, that's going to happen. Few computers ever go from review to end use in a matter of weeks. Initial shipment should already be here. Let's hope the comics doesn't do a disappointing tech set. That must be even obscure, more obscure machine. The Comics 35 is a fun machine and it offers great value for money. It's aimed at the first time buyer who starts off with games and goes on to programming and it hits that target spot on. All comics has to do is deliver it and any number of British and American companies will have to think hard. In short, it's not in short, like it or not, the Comics 35 is a winner. Winner in everything apart from actually being on sale and lots of people buying it and people developing games for it. Seriously, if anyone's seen that one of these machines, please leave something in the comic, com, comics comments because I can find no trace of these things on eBay. I've been looking for a few weeks now, certainly none coming up um, across Europe. Um, so, yeah, it's £120, 1080 1802 processor, 32k of RAM, 8 colours, um, 55 keys, and it works on a cassette tape. So we go on to the 10th of August, and what's this? Mupid, the communicating micro. Oh, not very pretty, is it? What's it with these keys? These keys. Right, let's go find the review. Here we go. This is the Mupid. Look at that. I mean, it's... Bit triangular, and what, what's all this stuff going on the back? Right, well, so right, let's have a look at the details of this machine. A micro without a printer interface, and with no software to drive the cassette interface, may sound to you like a waste of time. Well, probably, but this is no ordinary micro. And a quick glance at the cover of the magazine, the illustrations in this article should demonstrate its capabilities. Well, that's quite nice, 1983. The machine comes from Austria and has been designed as an intelligent view data terminal. Ah, look at me expand a full microcomputer system. So this is to do designing graphics and putting view data pages together using the UK Presto standards and the Canadian standards known as Teledon. And this is a Teledon. Oh, it's quite Teledon kind of teletext. Wow. Very nice. So look at these. Look at these graphics. Ooh. Thames versus LWT share. And look at, that. Look at these graphics, 983. So this is for the, this must be the Austrian view data, view data system. So it's got a Z80 processor, 64K of RAM, 24K of PROM in a hard plastic shell. That's some kind of stand storage thing. 
I got RS232. And um, when powered up, a circular Mupid logo appears on the screen. In the bottom right of the screen, there are four colored dots that indicate the current operational status. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's all, it's for, basically, designing view data pages and graphics and things. And look at these, they're really nice. They are really nice indeed. A graphic of the PDP-10 image created by the terminal created by itself huh? um, to generate the impressive teledron graphics you have to switch into the alpha geometric mode using a percentage and dollar instruction then you have a series of codes available and you basically draw I mean, how do you draw it then you you draw them by codes by the look of it um interesting a Mupi can also be used in the personal computer. On Presto, there are a few programs that you can download and run, including a German vocabulary course and a couple of games, uh, Mastermind and Breakout, which I think they mean Breakout by. But look at these. Look at the lovely graphics. Really are. That must be the inside of the machine. That must be the view data route. So they say the Mupid is still at an early stage of development and enhancements to the graphics editor and basic compiler are on the way. And it's going to be a one megabyte dual disk system running under CPM should be available from the end of August. Um, and yeah, they it looks very exciting. It's one of those things. I wonder how many of these they actually sold. It's as I say, it's an intelligent view data terminal. It can generate very impressive graphics. And um, the art department at PCN apparently <laughs> wanted to get their hands on it. Um, the machine is mainly finding a market un under companies. Requiring a private view data service that is cut above what Presto or Presto-like systems can provide. Um, and you can use this as a computer. The cost is £978, including VAT, Z80A base, 64K of RAM, and text-based Tatex format at 320 by 240 And it has seven colours um, at two levels of intensity each with two flashing frequencies. So that makes it 14 colours. Although there's some of those graphics that, that they had more colors and seven so one two three four no oh, i don't know what they mean there because look look what's colors there There's loads of colors in there and some of these other graphics um okay they're basic but hmm yeah on to the 31st of august 1983 and we finally got something you probably would have heard of yes the electron is out although we know what happened and how long it actually took to properly come out so let's go and see their review of the elk just a sawn off bbc or the wonder of the year max phillips puts acorns electron through its paces acorns electron looks to be the hit of micro of 1983 well hmm. memories of the euphoria that surrounded the painful launch of the bbc micro are recalled by the excitement generated by the electron yeah this is going to be pretty painful the machine itself holds no such surprises. It's cut down BBC pure and simple with just eight chips replacing the BBC's expensive and complicated board. It runs MOS 1.0 and BASIC 2. We know all this stuff. So what we want to know is what they really think of it. Now they do point out the BBC's awkward shift lock has been sensibly forgotten about. Keeping costs down is obviously important with the Electron leaving out a teletext generator was an unfortunate sacrifice. And it's a shame that Acorn hasn't included a software simulation of a teletext screen purely for compatibility purposes. It'd be awfully slow and take up piles of memory, but it seems a lazy emission. It is a lazy emission. Uh, they complain about the expansion here. This is the other sore point. All the Electron has is an edge connector. This is somewhat more complex than those used on Commodore and Sinclairs, simply because of the timing involved. Acorn describes interfacing as a non-trivial job. This leaves buyers at the mercy of Acorn's delivery schedules for add-ons. <laughs> Good luck. They point out the Electron, or Relk as the nickname goes, works like a slow BBC. Speeds can be up to four times slower, though BBC Basic remains a fast little mover. Relative to the competition, the Electron is delightfully quick. Graphics games in Basic are, are definitely possible. So what's the verdict? Acorn has an undoubted winner. The Electron isn't quite as simple as half-price BBC, but it does bring in amazing graphics and one of the fastest and most capable basics in the business. It's easy to use and easy to learn. Only the lack of built-in interfa interfacing and technical information spoil the Electron's image. 
but I suspect it could be low to 150 pounds if need be. Well, yeah, we kind of know how it ended up. If they'd actually launched it at this time and got the price right at the time, then it probably would have been a winner. But hey, you know, by 1984, when it actually came out and being dumped in the shops early 85, you know, it really wasn't, mm, you know, just a question of timing, really. Final machine we're going to look at today. And we've got the Coleco Adam coming out in November 1983. Look at those twin tape decks. Look at them. Look at them. And the joypad type thing there. Oh, dear. Look at it. Just I wonder how much that cost. But it was pricey. Two tape decks and everything else in it. And they've got the scoop. The first test of the Coleco Adam. Where are we going? And they've put it further. It's such a scoop. They've got it further forward in the front of the magazine. And they're scrolling down here. I've just seen adverts for a computer retailer selling lots of machines. They've got a Commodore 64 monitor, a printer, and a disk drive all for $899. And it comes with disk game, six free disk games and a finance program as well. Or just $239.99 for the Commodore 64. This is Christmas 83. So... Uh, the VIC-20 is £99. So the X-81, £56.95. A BBC Model B, 399 plus a disk drive for 179 More machines down here. The Sharp 249. Dragon's being... Oh, yeah. The Dragon is being ditched at 175 Oryx 139. Camputer Lynx, 299 Oh, yes. Uh, 48K, 199 And the... Uh, nine, I can't read that there. Let's go in a bit closer. 96k for 299. Oh, they've still got more. They've got this Interscomp keyboard for the Spectrum 59. Spectrum 16k 99. And I said Spectrum 129. And oh, look at all this stuff. Wonderful. More machines. How many pages is this company taking up? XL for 159. Um, no prices on the 800. VCS 69.99. It's already dirt cheap in 1983, the, the 2600. Oh, the Memtech 275, my talking computer, 59.95, and a monitor's 230. And all these, yeah, look, all these places you can go to. They've got shops all over the place, these Spectrum company. Oh, dear me, never heard of them. Winchester, Basingstoke, Aldershot, just in Hampshire alone there. Berkshire, Reading. Um, yeah, look at them. London, loads of shops in London. Anyway, sorry, we were looking at the Coleco Adam. A lot of computer makers talk about giving you more for your money. Every month there's yet another system hustled onto the market with promises of larger memory and more power, all for smaller investment. Coleco is basing much publicised new Adam on that premise as the computer is offered at such a radically lower price the industry is watching to see if Adam can come up with its advanced billing. What makes this computer so different is the entire system, including a letter-quality printer, will sell for just $700 in the US. The UK price is expected to be about £700. That's still about pricey, about £2,000 in today's money. The company isn't talking about how it managed such a coup, but a vertically integrated company was able to develop its own printer and tape drive. And 80k of internal memory as well. So you go, there's your printer, there's the main unit, and there's the keyboard. Does it come with a monitor? Hmm. Don't know. Right, so there, there's the unit anyway. And you've got two tape, tape drives there. So I believe you had to format your tapes before we put them in there. 80 column printer. It's a daisy wheel, is it? Yeah, it is a daisy wheel. Um, the Adam comes with three books, a 64-page setup manual and two larger binders for word processing and programming basic. Uh, construction, we now move on to the heart of the matter. Coleco has created Adam from three main components. The memory console, the memory console, I really mean the main unit, the keyboard and the printer. The console includes the system Z88 microprocessor, meaning compatibility with CPM, the RAM and the high-speed tape drive. The microprocessor addresses 64K of RAM, but the computer also contains a separate processor for the video display 
that includes an additional 16K of memory just for the graphics, bringing the total to 80K. Another 64K of RAM is available as an option, bringing the total up to 144K. Comes with two game controllers. Uh, the screen, oh, here you go. The screen for the Adam is likely to be your own television set. It had better be colour or you'll miss a lot of the Adam offers. During some operations, the screen contains four different sections with four different colours. Um, oh, and they talk about here in a box out here about the Coleco Games Machine will be able to take an upgrade that turns it into an Adam. So they talk about the uh, tape is preformatted to hold 500k of information. 250 pages of text. Information is stored sequentially on the tape with the initial information stored in the middle of the tape and later files added on either side. And it records at 19.2 kilobits per second, 16 times faster than other cassette systems. Uh, not so positive about the printer. So far, I have been fairly positive in detailing the Atom, but when it comes to the printer, I begin to worry. By advertising the Atom as a complete system, it could live or die if the printer doesn't hold up. Uh, to be positive... A lot of letter quality printers co alone cost as much as the Atom. Um, for the price, I suppose I could live with 120 words per minute speed, although it seems painfully slow. But here's the rub. Most of the plastic, most of the printer is made of hardened plastic and doesn't look at all sturdy. I doubt it can run well for any length of time. It looks like a small child could do a lot of damage quickly. Coleco squares it has tested the printer extensively, but I couldn't help wondering how well it would stand up to six months or a year of printing. Well, the old Amstrad DMP 2000 looked as flimsy as anything and people have still got those running so you know not too shouldn't necessarily to worry too much so we look at the verdict coleco has set a rock bottom price for the adam system but this puts the whole system out on a limb if one section such as the printer doesn't work i think coleco is going to have to prove that its printer is really sturdier than it looks i'd like to see it used for six months before i'm convinced it can stay the distance six months six months continuously Yet in the end, I find the printer holds up and you can use the 80 character lines. I think the Atom is a welcome addition. At the very least, it's, if it sells heavily, it's going to force the price of other computers down. Well, it's not going to sell heavily, is it? So uh, we're looking at 700 US dollars, translating to 700 pounds. Again, it's going to be 300 quid for the floppy disk drive and the 80 column card. And if you want to convert your Coleco Atom to, to this, it's going to cost you $500 or 500 pounds. Um, Z80 processor, 80k of RAM, 32k of ROM, and 500k on each cassette. So that's a fairly long look at some of the machines released in 1983, reviewed in PCN. Uh, we'll be doing 1984 in a few weeks, if all being well, and we'll have a look at what came out in the year that the Amstrad CPC launched. If you have any experience with these machines, especially the machine stuff like the Comix 35 and the Coleco Atom, Please put your comments in below because I would love to hear from anyone, especially as I say, comics or comics or whatever it's called, 35 if anybody ever actually saw one of those. That would be really interesting. <laughs>